let's talk about our next integration technique, which is called trig substitution. Trig substitution is really interesting because it both combines uh, a certain type of substitution that's different from what we saw with U substitution. Uh, it also involves using trig identities. So as a warm up, let's recall the following Pythagorean identities. If I start with the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one identity, and I solve for the cosine squared, I'm going to get one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. And what I want to do is I want to take the square root of both sides, then I'm going to get the square root of one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine of theta. Okay. Uh, if we look at our second Pythagorean identity, that's one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And if I take the square root of both sides of that one, I'm going to get the square root of one plus tangent squared theta, and then I get secant theta. And then for the last one, I'm basically going to manipulate the previous one. So I got secant squared theta minus one is equal to tangent squared theta. So taking the square root of both sides, I get secant squared theta minus one is equal to tangent theta. Okay, let's take a moment to review how U substitution works. U substitution really undoes the chain rule. Okay, so how did that look? Well, you know, when we have the chain rule, the chain rule basically says when you take the derivative of f composed with g of with g of x, do you get f prime g of x times g prime of x, right? So how did you undo the uh, chain rule? Well, the way u substitution works is your integral looks like f of g of x times g prime of x dx. And when you simplified that, you would get what I'm going to write as capital F of g of x plus c. So this inside part right here, that's your u. This whole part right here was your du. And this capital F, this was the anti-derivative of your little f. So that's really what u substitution was about. Um, what we want to do is we want to look at trig substitution. So let's slide this up here like this. Trig substitution is similar in that it still involves the chain rule. So in both cases, we, we were working with the chain rule. However, in trig substitution, we have an inverse substitution. Okay, so instead of identifying the u and the du, we are actually going to substitute the x and the dx. So this actually works backwards in some sense. Um, and uh, in reality, we're actually going to make our uh, integral almost look more complicated, but then we're going to use trig identities to simplify it. So our goal is to make substitutions that can use trig identities to calculate integrals involving square roots. Okay, so if you look back at our earlier um, discussions, you see how we had 
something involving a square root over here, something involving a square root over here, and something involving a square root over here. In some sense, you could almost pretend that um, this is sort of like how you would integrate square root of 1 minus x squared. This is how you would integrate square root of 1 plus x squared. And this is how you'd integrate the square root of x squared minus 1. So you see how all three of these involve the square root, and they all involve an x squared, but, and they actually all involve a 1, but this guy is 1 minus x squared, this guy is 1 plus x squared, this guy is x squared minus 1. So when we see these sort of forms, that is a clue to us that we want to use trig substitution. Let's take a look at some of the details of how we know when we want to use trig substitution. And just as I had described earlier, we're going to look at the, the different shapes. So if you have a shape that looks like the square root of a squared minus x squared, um, our substitutions are going to be x equal to a sine theta. And you need to replace the dx as well. So the dx is going to be equal to a cosine of theta. And remember, we need to restrict our domain so that it's 1 to 1. So our theta needs to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay. And at some point, we're going to be using the trig identity 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. Uh, you know, corresponding to that second trig identity we had up above, you know, the general shape we're going to be looking at is the square root of a squared plus x squared. And when we have this situation, our substitution is going to be x is equal to a tangent theta. And our dx, we just differentiate that, so that's a secant squared theta. And just as before, we need to make sure that our uh, function is one-to-one, -one, so we need to restrict the domain. And as you can probably see, I accidentally put it equal, less than or equal to. I really want just less than, because we have asymptotes at negative pi over two and pi over two. So the relevant trig identity here is the one I wrote up above, which is one plus tangent squared theta. And that's going to give us secant squared theta. And um, the last general shape we have is we're going to have x squared minus a squared. When we have this situation, our substitution will be x is equal to a secant theta. We have to differentiate that to get our dx. So it's going to be a secant theta tangent theta. And we had to restrict the domain of secant. So the domain of secant, when that gets restricted, it actually splits into two parts. We're going to have uh, your theta has to be between 0 and pi over 2. Or your theta has to be between pi and 3 pi over 2. So after having those restrictions, uh, we're going to be using the trig identity secant squared theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared theta. So let's take a look at an example. So let's suppose that you want to uh, do a trig substitution and you see a 9 minus x squared in the integrand, right? So if you look at those formulas up above, this is basically the same as the square root of uh, a squared minus x squared, where your a in this particular case is equal to 3, because you could think of 9 as 3 squared, right? So if you look up above here, 
our general shape is this square root of a squared minus x squared. So we're going to want to have our x be equal to a sine theta. So let's just write this down here. So our x is going to be equal to a sine theta, which in this case is 3 sine theta. And then our dx should be equal to the derivative of that, which is 3 cosine theta, d theta. Okay. So after we make these substitutions, you're going to be left with executing a trigonometric integral. But the nice thing is that we can use trig identities and hopefully everything falls apart nicely. This concludes our introduction to trig substitution. Take care, everyone.